Please take your seats. Find a quiet place to be. I'd like to open this special meeting of the town of Woodbury. The first order of business is to elect a moderator for this special meeting. May I have any nominations, please? I nominate Steve Murphy. So there's a nomination for Steve Murphy. Second. Is there a second? There's a second. So. Chris, that's going to have to be a pro tem nomination. That's going to have to be a pro tem nomination. That's a pro tem nomination. It's a pro tem nomination. So can we have a motion for a pro tem nomination? Uh, it's a temporary. It's not a moderator for for the year. So is that a second nomination? It has to be a new nomination. Is that correct? Could we amend the nomination, Ms. Busey, to be a pro tem nomination? The nomination is only good until town meeting anyway. Yes, ma'am. I'll second it. Second it. Thank you. Welcome. So, we have a pro tem nomination for Stephen Murphy. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion passes. Stephen. Thank you for electing me. I'll give a brief introduction on four points of order. Rules, articles, debate, and voting. Can't hear you. I have to take the mask off. Thank you. You're more handsome that way anyway. I'll give a brief introduction on four points of order. Rules, articles, debate, and voting. And then we'll proceed. Number one, the rules. Robert's rules of order are the basic rules of order for this meeting, except where Vermont state law takes precedence. You, members of the assembly, cannot change Vermont law, but by unanimous consent or two-thirds vote, you can change Robert's rules. You have the right to challenge the rulings made by the moderator. Please tell me if you think that I have ruled improperly. My job is to facilitate the will of the voters. <clears throat> Number two, the articles. An article must be moved and seconded and then stated by the moderator before it is under consideration and debate may begin. An article may have only one amendment at a time associated with it. And likewise, that amendment may have only one amendment associated with it. Don't worry, we'll, we'll all keep track of it together. We'll do it, we'll do it together. Number three, debate. <clears throat> All motions, remarks, and discussion must be addressed to the moderator. I will do my best to recognize you in the order that you raised your hands. After being recognized, please stand up, state your name. We need this information for the minutes and for everyone here. If there's no objection, Speeches will be limited to two minutes. However, speakers can ask for permission from the assembly to speak longer. 
Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the question. You may not engage in personal attacks on other members of the assembly or their motives. After you've spoken once, you may not speak on an issue a second time until every other member of the assembly has had an opportunity to speak on it once. You may be allowed to speak a third time by unanimous consent or a two-thirds vote. Debate may be cut off by a motion to call the question. That requires a second and then two-thirds vote. But you must be recognized to make this motion. In other words, you can't just yell out, call the question. Voting. A vote by division of the House may be called by one voter after a voice vote. A vote by paper ballot may be called by seven voters, either before or after a voice vote or a vote by division of the House. Reconsideration of an article is permitted until the point at which the assembly begins consideration of another article. A motion for reconsideration must be made by a member who voted with the prevailing side. So yes, on that motion, I will need to ask how you voted. At this time, I ask, <coughs> pardon me, those who are not registered voters in the town of Woodbury, please raise your hands. You are welcome here, however, you may not vote, and unless there is a suspension of the rules by the assembly, you may not make motions or speak in debate. Finally, to borrow a line from the long-serving moderator of the town of Westford, I remind us all after this meeting, we're still neighbors. So, remembering to raise your hands to be recognized to speak, what is your pleasure with respect to Article 1? I see one gentleman who would like to be recognized. Please stand and state your name. Monty Shatney. Monty Shatney. I'd like to move Article 1 into the fire. Uh, hold on, hold on, please. Okay, we can only deal with one article of business at a time. Okay, we are one. Article one. Okay. Excuse me. Article one is moved by Monty Shatney. Is there a second? Yes, sir. Please rise and state your name. Dennis Ferrero, I yeah. second that motion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. So we have a we have a motion by Monty Shadney, seconded by Dennis Burrell, to move Article 1. Article 1 states, Shall the town of Woodbury elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680B? Is there any debate? And I would like to say, Monty, you have a right to speak first on this issue. Okay. Is there any debate? Yes, sir. Uh, Dave Barnowski? Yes. The question for an ignorant man as to what an Australian ballot is. 
Yes. Uh, I would defer now to the clerk, please. I have an understanding of it, but I think it would be best to have it explained by the clerk or a town official to explain Australian balloting.
would like to make some, some remarks by unanimous consent. May, may he speak? There were two minutes. Yeah. If you'll check with the people over here, there is a likeness of my name on the list. I do not identify as a voter. I am a state national. So in terms of what you want to check me with that. Okay. Okay. I believe you identified yourself at the beginning as a non-registered voter in the town of Winter. I do not, I do not identify as that. Please, please. But you're seeking recognition to speak for two minutes. So without objection, Eric may speak for two minutes. Okay. Sure. Please. So I'm concerned about in the article you have pursuant to and then you have, I believe, in some statute from the state. Is that correct? What you read that we're debating about right now? Pursuant to 17 VSA, referring to the mod statutes, correct. Okay, so then it would be my understanding that we are further putting ourselves under the jurisdiction of the state and giving up local authority when we do this. So this is, so if we want to have local control over the way that we live our lives, we continue to give jurisdiction in these kind of forums to state and federal entities, we lose more and more control of how we live our lives according to the way that we, the people, originally decided to live. So this is my concern, and I'm just bringing it to light because I think in these times, it's more important for us to actually be present and local rather than to go to a larger group where we have less voice. And so that's why this is so important. I'm glad to see so many bodies actually showing up because the further we move into a virtual space, the further we get away from what we really are and the less control we have over our physical beings on this earth. Thank you. Did anyone else wish to speak? Yes, sir, please rise and state your name. Uh, Peter Peltz, you mentioned that this was a by state uh, mandate or legislation. So, I mean, this would, this would have been, this would happen no matter what, is that correct? No. It's not, I'm sorry, this year. Could you clarify, please? I thought you mentioned that the state uh, requested that towns put their uh, nominees on, on ballots for, for uh, Australian ballots for support. I didn't state that. Just, just, well, just for this year because of COVID. <laughs> um, our select board member city can clarify. But the legislature did give uh, towns the option this year because of the pandemic to uh, go have our town meeting voting done by Australian ballot. This is the same as we did last year. The select board chose to uh, go on the Australian ballot route for any of the town votes uh, this year. We could have postponed uh, our town meeting until later into the summer when um, you know maybe the pandemic wasn't quite so prominent, but we chose to uh, go on the Australian ballot route for this year. Yes, ma'am, please rise and state your name. Heather Lampier, and I just needed a clarification on the statement that Diane made about having to request a ballot this year. I'm not sure what that means. I recognize you Diana. Be, well, Brown is here. <laughs> you should be uh, getting a postcard in the mail pretty soon uh, explaining the process. You can call the town office, you can send an email, you can stop in and pick up a ballot. And um, an you put a few, right, an absentee, absentee ballot, right. And then you can return it, or, or you can come to the town hall on March 1st and actually vote in the town hall. But it won't be like this, it'll just be voting like we do with presidential elections. So just to make sure I understand that we're getting a postcard that will explain the process. Right. And then from there, we're either going to get another piece of mail or we're going to go to. Right, you're going to either, you, you can either pick it up or you can ask to have it mailed to you, and then you can return it, either bring it into the office or put it in the drop box or drop it off on March 1st at the town hall. Okay. So last year we mailed ballots to everybody, and 400 people never even responded, so it was kind of a waste of money. <laughs> and last year it was covered by the state, the cost was. Last year it was, but not by me. Please wait till you recognize the speaker. 
you wish to be recognized? Yeah. And please state your name. Brandy Smith. So last year it was under a grant that it was paid for, so that's why they were sent out to everybody. Thank you. There's a gentleman that saw his hand raised here. Please rise and state your name. Mike McGlynn. Uh, the question I have is if we mailed the ballot to everybody last year and we're doing the same process this year, why can't, or can we, the question is, can we amend that at this point so that everybody automatically gets mailed the ballot? This is about your vote. Pardon me. Thank you. 
Michael? So there would be two options if uh, a person didn't uh, petition to get on the uh, Australian ballot. Um, there could be a write-in option. Um, or, um, just blanked on the second one. Or the select board. Often, like what we did last year, there were a number of positions that, elected positions that weren't, that nobody ran for, so they were blank. And the select board, uh, after the town meeting, appointed different people um, to those positions. So those, those are so the two of them. Sir, I see that you're seeking recognition for second time, so uh, I will ask if there's no objection, this gentleman will speak a second. Wait. All, the, all those positions that went on left on the film ground. If people were here, somebody would nominate somebody for something. <laughs> I mean, really, somebody, who, who knows? Who, yes, it's in the town report that we need a cemetery commission. We need, you know, this and that and the other thing. But, you know, how do you know who wants to nominate who? If we're all together, we can nominate somebody. It always happens every year. Woman seek recognition? Yes. Yeah, in the case, I just wondered, and maybe Mike will be able to answer this, is the pre, if we do the Australian ballot, is the pre-town meeting automatic? Like, there is an automatic discussion meeting beforehand, no matter what will be scheduled, no matter what. And then on town, on voting day, we all just vote on our Australian ballots tournament. The objection is, is required, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but I believe that it is required if, if the town is voting by Australian ballot um, that there would be a pre town meeting with the opportunity to, to discuss the issues. Recognize this gentleman here. Uh, Joan Meacham. Um, I'm curious if. Is it required that the Australian ballot come before? Could, the, could there be a town meeting where the nominations happen at the town meeting? Voting is, if people want to vote there, they can, but it's not complete. And then the Australian ballot comes out of that, and, and then anyone who doesn't want to come to town meeting can vote by Australian ballot by a certain date. Uh, I don't believe that's true. Okay. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. I'm Janine Gallagher, and I love what Bill said. I love in that moment when someone says, I nominate so and so. And it's kind of funny when we nominate someone who's not there, then they have to say, I'm sorry, later. So, anyway, I would say we are a group of, I don't know, um, 100, 100 people plus, and we have 900 folks in this town, many of them children, but to me, it seems like um, a question of communication and a question of care and a question of connection. So what if we have a position open and there's no one here who someone is ticked to say, would you do it if it was open? What if we know somebody who's a neighbor who doesn't actually participate that much in town politics? But we think that they, they, we know that they're interested in this. And might they be interested in stepping forward if there was a little more connection and a little more community? So um, I guess what I'm asking is, if we're going to do it differently, how can we really do it differently so we involve more people? So it's not just a vote, Australian ballot vote, or the people who can show up for a meeting or care to show up for a meeting. Some people just aren't like, they don't want to do politics and they don't want to show up for a meeting. So how can we as a community reach out to our neighbors who we know and appreciate, even if our politics are the same, we still appreciate them. How can we reconnect people? See, Peter seeks recognition for a second time. If there's no objection, recognize him. Uh, um, this is Saturday. Um, this is a pretty good turnout, I think, for, for, for this issue. Um, and I know one of the issues about attendance and participation during uh, the first Tuesday of the month was has been an issue in regards to attendance and participation. Uh, and um, 
I hope we consider if we can if we can protect our our, our town meeting yep. uh, that we'll do it on Saturdays. Um, that's the first my first statement. The second statement uh, when this vote is taken, I, I ask for a paper ballot. Thank you. We will, we will get to that point. I I hear you. Uh, we have. Someone seeking recognition to speak a second time without objection. I'll recognize Laura. So I, I feel like I, I, I sympathize um, with what Lizzie was saying in that I feel for people who work and can't make a town meeting. That's happened to me before, and I felt disenfranchised that I wasn't able to be there. Um, and I feel for people who are disabled or who are elderly and don't feel comfortable coming out or aren't able to come out. Um, so the idea of the Australian ballot does resonate with me, um, but I, I was a political science major at UVM and I had a professor, Frank Ryan, who liked to say that the town meeting is the closest thing to democracy we have. And I have to trust that there's some kind of magic that happens at town meeting that we can't even fully understand. It's humanity, it's seeing your neighbors, looking in their eyes, knowing, geez, I might not look the same as you, but I love that you love your kids, and I love that you promote the school and the town, and I can appreciate you for that. And there are people in town here that I have the utmost respect for, and I'm quite sure we don't always align politically, and I don't care. I love them, and I appreciate them. And I think coming to town meeting makes you remember that. There's a humanity to it, and, and it's important. Um, so I, I do, I do feel like the Saturday idea could be a good idea. I know some people do work Saturdays, but it, I am all for the more people that can vote, the better. I want to just feel like that as much as we can promote more people voting, that's a better thing. Um, so I think that we need to find a way that we can all sit down and talk to each other. Um, but the most people can come as possible. Yeah, yeah. I recognize the gentleman here to speak. Please rise and state your name. Hi, I'm Norm Atkin. Um, I just want to, in reference to Lizzie's question, I think the, uh, you know, I like the idea of uh, before we, we go to Australian ballot, of, of trying to do town meetings on a Saturday like we're here today. Um, and I think the, um, uh, basically, uh, to answer your question, I think under other business, we can bring up a motion to advise uh, the select board that it's the meaning of, uh, feeling of this body that they would like to see them take that action. It's not a binding resolution, but we can, we can do something like that and get the, uh, and see if that makes sense. And I think the, um, you know, the reason to keep a town meeting certainly is that, uh, you know, as we've heard already today, that there are some points of clarification people didn't understand uh, the meanings of certain articles, and we can discuss that, and we can clarify it, and so people can do a, a more intelligent vote. I know I changed the way I was going to vote from things I heard when I understood things better, so that's all I wanted to make those points. Hey, first, to recognize this woman, please stand and state your name. Jane Novorenda, and um, I have been um, nominated during town meeting to an appointment I really didn't want. I was talked into it. I think it's a great way, and I think it's the way you get your community together and how you get. And so I've been an auditor for too many years, and I've been trying not to do it for too many years, and I got appointed again this year and decided I'd run for one more year and then not. I think it's to have town meeting, this is how you get your community. And having lived in the town of Berlin for 47 years, when I moved over here, uh, during Berlin changed from a town meeting to um, Australian ballot, and it changed the town completely. I don't want to see that happen. On the next article, I will speak to that. But I think it's important, and I think at town meeting, you can get talked into something, and you can say, you know, it was a good thing that I did that. So I hope we keep it. I recognize this gentleman. Please 
Dan from State Gene, uh, Skip Marcusani. Point of clarification, there's multiple articles we're going to talk about today, correct? Yes, we have three articles on the agenda. The first article is to elect the select board by Australian ballot. There's nothing in there about town meeting. There's nothing in there about budgets. There's nothing in there about other business that would come before the town. I can't hear the question. I'm sorry. There's multiple articles that are going to be discussed and voted on today. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about right now is electing our select board by Australian ballots. That's the first one. There's nothing in that article about town meeting. There's nothing in that article about budgets. There's nothing in that article about other town business. So we're sort of confusing things here. Yeah. This is only to elect the select board by Australian ballots. By default, that says select boards would not be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, select Skip. boards would Skip. not be elected at town meeting if we still chose to have a town meeting. Okay, let's well, give it to Am I correct? On the county border here. I'll, I'll state the article again. I'll, I'll state it for clarification. Shall the town of Woodbury elect its town officers? by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680. I understand correctly. All the All the But it's still nothing about budget, it's nothing about other funds. I recognize the gentleman here. Hi, Mr. Shad. My concern is right now you have 14% of registered voters deciding on town meeting day, deciding for 100% of, of the community. Last year we sent out ballots to everyone and you got 50% uh, response. Now you talk about community, 14% of a community is not that big. 50% is a lot bigger. Now I think there's a big disconnect with everyone that wants town meeting. People nowadays are so busy, it doesn't matter if it's a Saturday, it doesn't matter if it's a Monday, 4 o'clock, 10 o'clock, they want instant gratification. They want to be able to go, vote, and, and go home. Or, or they don't want to spend all day at a town meeting, four or five hours. It's, it's sad, but it's true. Town meeting is a, really a thing of the past. Um, so just think about that. 14% is deciding for everyone in town. Stop the okay, um, I, I see a, a, a request for recognition back here. First, without objection, Lizzie, would you like to speak a second time? Um, yes, I'm hoping to start with clarification from you or whoever has the answer to this. Be a yes or no to these articles, or can we find another option and vote on that today? I will. I will answer that as a as a point of order. The articles are subject to amendment. They are only. Well, we have three articles. There's article. Excuse me. Article one and article two. Article three is a non-binding business. Other, uh, to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. However, under Article 3, any votes that are adopted are non-binding. Uh, without objection, I saw Monty raise his hand for recognition. Okay. We, we have a request to call the vote. We have a motion. Um, is there a second? Second. Uh, please raise your hand. I'll recognize someone. Yes, please state your name. Tom um, I second the motion. Okay. So we have a motion. Is there any more discussion or not? Uh, we, are, we are entertaining a motion now made by Monty, seconded by Tom, to call the question. To call the question. So the motion is shall debate 
cease and voting occur immediately on the question in Article 1. Now, this motion before us is not on Article 1. That's the, that's the question. What we're voting on here is stopping debate on Article 1. And then we would move directly to a vote on that article. No. There, um, That's a procedural question. Point of order? Point of order. Uh, you may raise a point of order. My point of order? Yes. yes. I'm not necessarily Please. challenging this. I'm just wondering if this is a possible challenge because personally I like debates continue. Monty has spoken more than three times. Wasn't it a two-third majority no, no. to agree? Yeah. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Monty spoke without objection of the assembly. So, so there is, you don't need to have a vote on that? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So we have a motion and a second. To call the question, there is no debate on this motion. It's not amendable. It requires two-thirds vote to be adopted. So, again, I'll, before I put the question to you, I'll restate it. If you vote aye in favor of this motion, you're voting to stop debate and move directly to a vote on Article 1. If you vote no in opposition, you are voting to continue debate on Article 1. Are there any questions? Yes. I recognize, uh, without objection, I recognize Lizzie for question. You said there's no debate. Before the vote. Uh, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question on order. I want to ensure that everyone understands the vote. This is appropriate. I'm just wondering if other people have input, you know, before we start the debate. No, no, no there's, no, no, there's, uh, let me just clarify, let me just clarify. This is a properly made motion at this point to call the question. It was seconded. There is no debate on this motion to call the question. And just to, just to make sure everyone understands, this is not a vote on Article 1. It's just a vote on stopping debate and moving to a vote on Article 1. Does everyone understand? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, I'll restate the question. Shall debate cease and voting occur immediately on the question in Article 1? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it. Request the paper. Okay. We have, a, we, have a, we have a request for a paper ballot that requires seven vo voters' requests. Are there six other requests for a paper ballot? Uh, pardon me, we are, we're underway considering a request for a paper ballot. I count more than six, clearly more than six other requests. So we are going to conduct the vote to call the question by paper ballot. I ask the assistance of the town clerk and the justices of the peace to conduct the vote by paper ballot. Okay, I've 
received a report on the counting of the paper ballots on the question that was before you to call the question. The results are as follows. Eyes, 75. The nose, 29. The eyes have it. The motion is adopted to call the question. Now we will move back to the question on Article 1. The question before you now, you conduct a vote on this at this moment, is Article 1. Shall the town of Woodbury elect its officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680B? So, I'll explain the effect. If you vote aye in favor, you're voting to elect your town officers by Australian ballot, as we discussed during the debate. If you vote no in opposition, you're voting to not elect town officers by Australian ballot. Are there any questions? We have a gentleman in the back who seeks to be recognized. He's no. not. Um, no. No? Okay. No. I'm sorry, sir. You may not speak what? at this. Uh, sir, I'm sorry. You may not speak at this moment. I, I have the right. Sir, sir, you may not speak in, at this moment because you identified yourself as. You sir, you identified yourself as a non-voter at the beginning. No, you characterize me as, and as a misunderstanding, and I'm correct. I, I, I saw your hand raised at the beginning. And what was the question you asked at the beginning? The, so, what was the you, question you asked? Are, I'll, I'll ask now, just to clarify, are you a registered voter in the town of Woodbury? I do not have the, I am not identifying. Sir, a please answer yes or no. I do not consent to answer to your authority. Okay, if the, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, please, please, please. I did not hear the gentleman answer yes. I sought the assembly's, the assembly's permission to allow you to speak. Right. And there was objection, so I'm sorry. Okay. Order, order. 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 Mr. Moderator. Order. Mr. Moderator. Order. I think if you have to request, you will have the volunteers to remove the Order, sir. Sir. I'm in the process of establishing order at the meeting. This is ridiculous. This whole procedure is ridiculous. So you are ridiculous. If you don't identify with anything, just get the hell Order! 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 I will remind the assembly where we are in the proceeding. I restated Article 1. We are in the, in the process, or we are approaching a vote on Article 1. I restated the question, and I asked if there were any questions on the effects of your vote, aye or nay. We'll get this clarified. So, yes, you have a question about the effects of the vote. Yes, Kaki comes. My question is, if we vote yes, then will we 
still have a town meeting. If we vote no, is it automatic that we will be coming together to vote for town officers in a town meeting? That's that, my question. that question is out of order now. Oh, okay. It's out of order. <laughs> it's about the article. We had a debate on Article 1, and the question before you now is on Article 1. Yes, you have a, you have a, a question about the... I'm not sure if I vote, this is Heather Winkler, if I vote, um, if I if I would like to have a Saturday meeting, do I have to vote this down and then have another thing? What happens? This, okay. And I'll, I'll answer this because I believe it's a point of order. And I need to apologize. I believe I made an incorrect ruling on the last question. So this is, the vote on Article 1 is not affecting whether or not Woodbury is conducting an annual town meeting. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. We're still we're still about to vote on Article One. We're not debating the merits of Article One, but we're trying to understand the consequences of the vote up or down. Remember, yes. I, I recognize. Uh, Janine this Gallagher, yeah. this might be a point of order or it may be asking out of turn, asking out of turn. But I do want to recognize all the folks who might not be able, in different ways, to do an Australian ballot. Is there a process? for us as community members to help engage other community members or it's not it's a process um, is there any way for us to create a process that we can support our community members and what's i guess what's the way before i say yes or no um, i might be able to pick up an elderly neighbor and bring yeah. 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 Okay. okay okay folks yeah we have questions coming up that sound to me similar to questions that were raised in debate. We had a vote to call the question to, to bring the vote up on Article 1. That's so, so I just want to, again, put this to the assembly. The question you're voting, you're answering by this vote. Shall the town of Woodbury elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680B? Make motion to say yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, let's make sure that everyone understands the effects of this vote. Yes, I recognize this gentleman. John Reed, I asked for a paper ballot. Oh. Second. Okay. We have a request for paper ballot on the question in Article 1. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so we have a question before us we're about to vote on on Article 1. There's no more debate on Article 1. We have now had a request for a paper ballot. That, that request requires seven, seven requests in order to hold a paper ballot. We have one, are there six? Oh, yeah. Okay, I clearly see that there are more than six other requests for a paper ballot. So before we go to the ballot, and we will conduct the ballot in a similar fashion as we just did a moment ago, I'm going to lastly restate the question. This is a question on Article 1 in the warning. Shall the town of Woodbury 
elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680B. And at this point, I request again the Board of Civil Authority, Justice of the Peace, and the Clerk to conduct a paper ballot. Okay, we have the results of the votes. I will read the total and the result of the vote on Article 1. The ayes had 52 votes, the noes had 53 votes, Article 1 fails. at this point. You may make a motion to reconsider the question. That would be a properly made motion now. It would, I'll explain this. Because, because I stated the, the results of the vote and we have not yet begun to consider the next article. A motion to reconsider the question is in order. It would need to be made by someone on the prevailing side. So someone who voted no. Someone who voted no. So up, oh, please, please, please. So I'm just I'm, I'm explaining to you the point in the procedure where we are here. So a motion to reconsider now at this point is in order. It would need to be made by someone who voted against, someone who voted no. It would require a second. That person does not necessarily have had to vote one, one way or the other. Oh, they did, but not against. Um, it would be debatable. Uh, not amendable, and it would require majority vote. So, so first, I'm I'm I, I'm going to come back to Monty because he raised his hand and asked, "Would you like to make a motion to reconsider?" Okay. I I recognize someone else sought to speak. Uh, I recognize Mike McGlynn. Mr. Moderator, the it's. The criteria for that reconsider vote is a very ambiguous because it's a paper ballot cast. And what you're saying is it would have to be requested by somebody who voted no. How do you know the person making that motion voted no because it's a paper ballot? And How do you address that? As well, well, similarly on a voice vote, a voice vote went out. The moderator would not necessarily know how the members voted. So it's, it's my duty, if someone wishes to make a motion to reconsider, to ask them. And they would need to state whether they voted on the prevailing side. If they state yes, it's in order for the moderator to move that motion forward. I recognize Laura Murphy. The motion to reconsider is just to revote, to recount the ballots? No. The motion to reconsider, if a motion to reconsider is adopted, um, um, pardon me, pardon me. If the motion to reconsider is, is, pro, is, is orderly made, the question itself, Article 1, would be fully reconsidered. 
and 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 re-voted. It would be reconsidered. So the debate would start. Yes, the debate. It would be. Pardon me. Yes, it would be. It would be subject to debate. Oh, please. Okay, we're we're sorting out some points of order here too. We have a question about the voting. I'm going to recognize Michael. So, Monty, when we realized it was so close, we did recount it. So we counted it twice. A question in, from the back. I recognize you, Randy Smith. Can I ask Robin what was the head count for votes? Doing it right now. Okay. Thank you. Well, if you know the number of people who voted, you can add them together whether there was an extra vote. We will pause. Um, we will hold. We'll pause just a moment. And see if we can get an answer. If we if we can't get an answer in a moment, we'll move on. But but we do have a a question pending. Yes, I I recognize Michael. So there was one person who voted to abstain for a little bit. So just for clarification in the head count. Okay. I'm I'll tell you, Michael just said there was one paper ballot cast that said abstain. So it's time. No, that vote, that vote was not counted. If, correct, it was not counted as either a yes or a no. It was not tallied in either of those columns. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I appreciate their checking the register, but people have left. So there'll be more people most likely that show they came in here, but not everyone is still here. So Okay. We had 112 people sign in and it was 106 that voted. Okay, did everyone hear? Okay. Is okay. Are there any other any other, any other speakers wish to speak? Yes, yes please. Do you have the numbers from uh, the first question? So the total uh, it was seventy something this morning. Here we are. I, I will, for point of order, I will read back the, the results of the paper ballot on the motion to call the question. The ayes, 75, noes, 29. By my count, that's 104. Thank you. So, yes, I'll recognize Michael. So, people, you know, there could be some folks here that didn't vote at all. So, having, you know, comparing the number of votes that were counted to the number of people who signed in, you, know, you don't have to vote if you don't want to. So, there may be some people that don't vote. So, it doesn't really solve the problem. Okay, so, folks, this brings us back to the point we have not yet begun to address. Consider Article 2. And we're, we're clarifying questions about the numbers, but we're going to proceed unless there's another question. Yes, I recognize Michael Moore. Where are we on the question to reconsider? Is that? No, the, the, we, are, we are explaining how a motion to reconsider would be made. Yes. Would, yep, that's where we are. We are, and if there's no one from the prevailing side, that is, if there's if there's no one who voted no, who wishes to bring a motion, then that motion is not in order right now. Yes, I recognize. Cassie, yes. what if they didn't vote? Could they say? <laughs> no, no. So, okay. okay no, I, I'll just explain. I'll explain. It would need. To, 
if someone, someone would make a properly made motion in order to reconsider if they cast their vote with the prevailing side. Okay. Yes, I recognize. I'd like to Laura. Uh, put a request in to reconsider. Okay. We have, we have, a, would you like to make a motion to reconsider? Okay. I need to ask, how did you vote on, how did you vote on the question in Article 1? No. Okay. So, we have someone, we have Laura who made a motion to reconsider. It's properly made because she voted no on Article 1. If there's any second, uh, is it, a second could come from someone who voted for or against or abstained. So any, any voter here could second the motion to reconsider. Is there a second? Okay, we have a second. Okay. <coughs> Kirk Thompson, second. So, we are, we're in the middle of, of proceeding with the motion here. So, we have a motion made and seconded to reconsider the question on Article 1. So, is there any debate? We are now, I, I, I just want to clarify, we are now reconsidering, we're back reconsidering the, the debate, the merits of Article 1. And this will, this will proceed point to order. a vote. Point of, point of, pardon me, just for one second, there was a gentleman seeking recognition yeah, back here. No. What, what does reconsider mean? I don't know what we're talking about. Okay, okay. This, uh, let me explain. So, reconsider means that there's a quest, that there's a, a motion and a second to come back to the question and reconsider your, reconsider your, uh, your position, your arguments, and ultimately your vote. So the, yeah. Okay, um, point of order, I'll, I'll, I'll recognize this would be. To clarify, the debate now is on whether to have a vote to reconsider. The debate now is not on the merits of the article, is that correct? No, that's not correct. The, so the question was, are we having a motion to entertain the question, should we reconsider Article 1? That's not correct. The, the motion was made by someone on the prevailing, who cast a vote on the prevailing side. It was seconded. So by order of that, we are now reconsidering Article 1. So there is no vote on reconsideration? I think that's incorrect. We have to vote on that. There's a lot of people I am, I am incorrect. Thank you. I am incorrect on that point. Yes. The motion before us now is shall the assembly reconsider Article 1? Hold, hold just, please pause just, just a moment. I'm going to summarize where we are uh, to locate myself here in the proceeding. We've had a motion, properly made motion, which was seconded to reconsider the question of Article 1. If you vote yes in favor, you're voting to reconsider Article 1. If you vote no in opposition, you're voting to not reconsider Article 1. So we're going with, if we say no, we're going with the vote as it stands. 
That's good. If this motion, if this motion fails, we will not reconsider Article One. The vote will will stand. The results of the vote will stand. Yes, I recognize you. Okay, Hayes, and for a point of clarity, if this goes to a revote, what is we need a two thirds majority to pass to move the article? Is that true? What's the No, okay, okay. So we are we are we have not yet we have not yet entered debate on reconsideration. The motion to reconsider is debatable. It would require a majority vote to be adopted. So if you to reconsider. In order, in order to make a decision about how to vote, I need to just be reminded, if it goes to another vote, it was very close before, right? What, how many votes does it need in order to pass? What okay. percentage of the people here voting? Let me, let me explain my understanding of your question. So the, the question on, on this point is, if the motion to reconsider is adopted and the assembly goes back and reconsiders the question on article 1 does the does the requirement for passage of article 1 change and the, the answer is no article 1 would still be subject to a majority vote. Majority in order to pass. Majority meaning what percentage of the people here? It would, it would need to be a simple majority. It would need to be 51% of the votes cast, or greater than 50% of the votes cast. So the result that we have right now is that the article didn't pass. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yes. And some of those have left. Oh. Would you like to be recognized? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, Janine Gallagher. So I have observed some folks leaving during this. So to do it again, might be all right. We might get um, 49 to 47. It would be a good vote. It's so close. All I can say is. That, yeah, this, you, you could make these points in order because we're still going to have debate on the question of whether to reconsider. We haven't got there yet, but I will I'll take more questions on, on points of procedure. So I just want to remind you, we have a motion made and seconded to reconsider. The, the question before you is, does the assembly reconsider Article 1? The question is not, should we vote up or down on Article 1? Okay, so are there any more questions about the procedure, where we are here? Okay. Okay, yes? Uh, Abby Barber. <laughs> Abby Barber. Um, I'm not sure if the question about procedure, but I just want to be real clear black and white. If we vote, if we did vote, yes. It's, we voted to do away with town meeting and do it by Australian ballot. not germane to the matter at hand. So, are there any more questions about where we are in the procedure now? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to restate the question and then put it out to debate. Okay? So the question is, shall the assembly reconsider the question of Article 1. Yes? John Reed, I call the question. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> <laughs> Just a 
moment, please. <laughs> Okay. Okay. The motion to call the question is out of order at this time. It would be in order once debate has begun on the question. Can I make a motion to end debate? <laughs> debate has not yet begun. So, I, let me, okay. Okay, we'll move, we'll move slowly for my benefit. We'll move slowly for my benefit. So, the question before you now is shall the assembly reconsider the question of Article 1? Okay, we've had a motion, it's been seconded. We have not yet begun debate, but that may be the next step. Yes, a question, I recognize Peter. Could it be done by voice vote? <laughs> yes, any, yes, hold just a moment, let me. A vote by paper ballot may be called by seven voters either before or after a voice vote or a vote by division of the House. So, yes, the question on reconsideration could be uh, the vote on the question of reconsideration could be conducted by a paper ballot. The question was going to be done by voice vote. Yes, yeah. that's the default. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I must have misunderstood. But let me just pause for a moment and make sure I understood, Peter. Did you ask about a paper ballot? No. no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I asked, could it be resolved by a voice vote? Uh, yes. yes, yes, unless unless seven voters ask for a paper ballot or one voter requests a division of the house, which would be a showing of the hands and we could count. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, other questions at this moment in the procedure? Yes, please, I'll recognize you. In the uh, Michael Sadler, I, I'm, may I move that we start debate on this reconsideration question? <laughs> No, that motion is out of order because the motion we are we are in the process of dealing with the motion at the moment, and we're just getting clarification on procedure. Yes, I recognize the speaker here. Hi, my name is Kate. Consider the motion yes, to can we vote to reconsider? Yeah, the motion has been passed. Okay, okay. Well, let me let me explain. That the motion which has been seconded to reconsider is not yet subject to a vote at this moment because we have not yet begun debate. Debate, we, we're not there, we're getting there. And I as moderator. I want to ensure that every voter here understands the consequences of votes and motions and so forth. So we're we're going to we're going to move we're going to move a step at a time. Make sure everyone understands. Is it, is there anyone who has another question about the procedure at this point? Yes. Uh, if we vote to reconsider and then take the vote on the, the amendment itself, uh, our article again, is that vote subject to reconsideration? <laughs> no, in my understanding, it would not be subject to reconsideration again. Maybe, maybe, I, is, is there... Is there someone from an elected officer who has a 
Jones, who has a, uh, an answer on that question. I, I would, in, in my understanding, and this is how I would rule, that, that, that the, if Article 1 is reconsidered and voted on, the result of that vote on Article 1, if it were reconsidered, would be final at this meeting. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about the procedure at this point? No. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to restate the question. No. No? No. I'm going to restate the question. And then I will immediately ask for debate, if there's debate. Shall the Assembly reconsider the question of Article 1? Is there any debate? I recognize Kirk, Mr. Thompson. Hi, I'm Kirk Thompson. It's hard to tell when the debate's going to start. The it's like before we got shut down, a lot of people had things to say. It looks like it's going to happen again before anybody even has anything to say. They're just going to go right back to the vote. Are we at debate yet, or is that coming? You just started. Yeah. Debate. Continue if you if you have more to well, say. My only problem with this whole thing, I respect everybody's opinion, but I mean nationwide, statewide, it's all about being able to vote. And if we do don't do Australian ballot, we're telling two thirds of the town you have to choose between work or family to vote. Not that town meeting is not fun and a great place to go, but I'd rather go to five racks. <laughs> you know, my mom's not here because she didn't feel up to it. And uh, I don't have any other people that are working. I should be working. Um, but, you know, I just think it, we're limiting everybody's chance to vote. And that's what we're opposing. All about now is being fairly, giving everybody a chance to vote that wants to. And a lot of people just can't make it to town meeting. Okay, I recognize Mike McGlynn. I make a motion to end debate. <laughs> okay. I had my hand up way before. So I, I want some debate, so before we take a motion to end debate, my hand was up first. Okay, folks. I have a question as to who should have been recognized first. I, I am uncertain. So I am going to with Without objection, I'm going to ask the assembly to vote on who should be recognized. Everybody should talk. Let us speak. Okay. Okay. There. Okay. There is. There is. There has been an objection. In my, under Robert's rules, in my understanding, the moderator, the moderator has the authority in recognizing speakers. I am going to, going to recognize Eric to make some remarks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I don't want to drag this on. It's not what I'm here to do. I'm just asking people um, that maybe they should, we should pass this reconsideration because there are obviously some questions about uh, the, the motion uh, with, with whether town meeting was going away or not. There's still some unclarity with some people. Okay, I know most of us have probably made up our minds what we want to do, but if, if there's questions about what the motion that we voted on really was, did we get an accurate count of what the town wants? Uh, and just to go with what Kirk said, we're 30 years, we've been here 30 years, I've never been able to make a town meeting, and I most certainly would like to say what we're on the town. Okay, I will now recognize Mike McGlynn. If you wish I, to speak. I make a motion that we cease debate. Okay, so 
We have a motion to call the question. By another name, call the question. So. Second. Mr. Moderator, the point of clarification. I did not call the question, which requires two thirds to vote. I made a motion to cease debate. Okay, wait a moment, please. Second. Okay. So, get up. If I understand correctly, we have. I'm going to. I'm going to state where we are. We are in the middle of debate on the question of reconsideration. You made a motion to. Stop. Made a motion to cease debate. I did not call the motion, only because that would require two thirds vote. I okay. made a motion to cease debate. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm using for authority here. This is. This is from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns workshop for moderators that I attended Thursday. Okay? Okay? I recognize this motion to limit debate on a pending question. Such a motion would need to be seconded. No debate required. It's not amendable. And in order to be adopted, it would require a two-thirds vote. So, the requirement for voting for adopting it would be two-thirds. Can we do a hand vote? No, I'm, I'm explaining, I had a question about the nature of the motion. So, I consulted the authority that I have here to make the best ruling that I can. Yes, Mr. Moderator, yes. based on the fact that your interpretation says it requires two-thirds of the vote, I withdraw my motion. Okay. The motion has not been seconded, so it's still in possession of the maker. It's properly withdrawn. So the, the motion to cease debate has been withdrawn. So, we are now still debating the question, should the Assembly reconsider Article 1? Yes, I recognize you. Jane Nolte Wendell. Um, I'm, it's not going, this is not going to have any effect on this year's election. Uh, I think there's a lot of issues here, and I think we can properly debate them uh, when we're not masked, in, you know, spring, summer. Uh, I think we have, um, can have more debate, and we can um, really hash out when town meeting is, if we have town meeting. There are lots of different options other towns have had, and to make it, it's not going to make any difference this year. We can do something in the spring and in the summer to change it if you want next year. But this isn't going to make any difference this year. So I don't understand why we're in such a hurry to do it today. Is there any other debate? I saw... The speaker raised their hand first. I'll, I'll come around after. I recognize you. I guess I would just sort of continue that. Please, line, please stand. Um, continue that line of argument that if we really are concerned about having as many voters as we can decide on things in town, why would we decide this when a lot of people in town don't feel comfortable coming to this meeting? And more and more people are leaving because we're and, Yeah, so most people don't even want to be in this room. And so if the true meaning of this is to get more voters out, is this really the time to be deciding such a big thing for our town? Maybe this, this is a good debate for some other time and we're not seeing the right past. 
see this guy. I will, I will recognize in the order I saw here, so I'll recognize you, please. Trustee Gilbert, I'm failing to see the majority of the problem here. At the end of the day, we're not asking to get rid of town meeting. We're asking to allow the majority of the town voters to have a say. That's all we want, is to have a say without feeling obligated to take a day off to go to town meeting. That's all it is. Just a piece of paper for us to fill in the blanks, check the boxes, and to have a say. It doesn't need to be debated. You can still have town meeting. Town meeting can happen the same exact way. That does not need to change. Those that want town meeting, keep that spirit alive. Keep it going. There's nothing wrong with that. The people that can't, give them a chance to have a say. That's it. I recognize the woman in the back. It's really done that here. Um, this article is only talking about shall we or shall we not elect town officials by an Australian ballot. It says nothing about town meeting. It's not in the, it's not in the article. So I, I, you know, we keep talking about town meeting, and I get that because it's kind of fun sometimes. But the only thing this article is talking about is do we elect these people by Australian ballot, and we have to come in here and do it. That would give more people in town the option to elect people who believe them. I recognize this gentleman. Uh, gentlemen, meet you. Um, uh, so I, I raised an idea earlier, and, and I, I'm sitting here and I'm listening, and, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with the people who um, who have said that more more voting is better. The fact that we've had 50 percent when we sent out the Australian ballots versus 14 percent to show up for town meeting. The issue that I hear, though. <coughs> I understand that we're not talking about canceling town meeting. If we, if this, uh, if this article is approved, the um, town meeting becomes a conversation. It's just a conversation and nothing else. Um, and so, I think I, I spoke with Michael here for a minute about what my uh, suggestion was earlier, which would allow town meeting to still have some weight but allow people who don't want to come or can't come to vote. And as I understand it, we, the, the, the question I raised earlier can't happen because of the Vermont state article that we're voting on, the, the, that this is all pursuant to. And I suggest that, I, I don't know how much the select board has looked into what our options are and not calling them out in any way, but it really seems like there may be a middle ground that we can try and reach here where town meeting can still have some weight to it so that the people who want to go feel like it is not just a conversation but is part of the municipal process, but that the people who don't want to come, that they still get to vote. And so I think that you know this sort of binary solution we have here, however it gets voted on today, gets, somebody gets disenfranchised. So whatever the whatever the, the the solution, whatever gets voted on here today, I implore all of us to seek a better solution because this binary decision is not good for us. It's not good for our town. It's leaving somebody out. And yes, if I had to choose between 50% and 14, 50% is better, but it ain't great to leave 14% of our town out either. So Okay, some more to be. Yes, I recognize the place. I'm sorry, I saw you. Diana was before I thank, thank you, Diana. I recognize Diana. I'm just going to say something about the whole thing that we consider that we're now talking about. And I'm going against it just for the point that uh, Janine pointed out that some people have already voted and left, and it's not fair to them. It's not that fair to them. Uh, yes, I, I recognize you. I'll come back up. Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Wendy Case. So the vote to reconsider to me is coming. One of the reasons I voted no was because there wasn't enough discussion. We cut the discussion off too soon. So if we, in my opinion, if we vote to reconsider, then we're going to open up the discussion again. So it's kind of a matter of time at this point. Do we want to open that discussion up again now? Or do we want to go with the 
vote and bring it up again, as someone suggested, and in a more, in a timely fashion when people aren't feeling antsy to leave and get on with their day. So for that reason, I would suggest we don't reconsider and move on with the other articles and then come back to this idea about the Australian ballot at another time when we have more time and more information and everybody can come really informed about what it means and what needs to happen for the town and what would include the most voters too, because I really support that. I'm going to recognize this our hand over here first, and then I'll see it in the back. Yep. Janine Gallagher, so I just want to add on to what Libby said so beautifully, and gentlemen in the gray shirt. Um, really thinking, so um, I'm, I vote to not reconsider today. And that is because we've really opened up a whole question about who can vote, how can they vote? Are we, we, um, we um, think we have 50% of the voters who responded and only 14% who come to team meeting. We still have a large part of our community who is not participating. So um, I, sorry guys, I feel like, should we go back to the drawing board and think about how can we create a situation where we make it accessible to a lot of people? And so um, that's my question. Maybe we have something else to consider, but the binary situation that we're looking at right now. And the other thing is, did we just had a town meeting today. Sorry, y'all. I mean, we could do it again in March. We're not going to, but we did. We're all here. Okay, I recognize the woman in the back, the young yeah. shirt. <laughs> yes. Um, my name is Jeanette Foster, and I've been listening. And um, I think probably the solution to me is to have a town meeting, but also maybe before the Australian ballot and to the Australian ballots, because then everybody can vote. And those that want to come to the town meeting can come. And we should vote today because we have another one who knows who's going to come. If the people laugh, that's their choice, you know. So we should clear it up today. And I mean, that everybody knew that's why we were coming. And anybody could come if they wanted to, really. So that's what I think should happen. And you're doing a great job. <laughs> And so are you. Thank you. Before we proceed, I just want to, everyone to focus. The debate now is on the question of reconsideration. I know that there's a fine line, but try to stay on this side of it. We're talking about reconsideration. Um, I, I, I'll come back to you in a moment. I saw our hand in the back first, and then I'll recognize you. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. My name is Ann Phelps. Um, I would vote that we do not reconsider, I mean, I would suggest or add to the debate that we don't reconsider. I believe that both, this is where I'm walking the line, so sorry, um, both proposed situations pose problems. Um, Australian ballot limits our opportunity for a participatory democracy in which we're making decisions together at that time. If we're in town meeting, it limits the ability of some people to participate. So either situation presents problems. Let's give ourselves enough time, we, have, we do have a full year, to investigate other solutions that could potentially, as others have suggested, walk a middle line that gives us the best case scenario in which people can be heard and participate, but also have the chance to vote if they can't be in a room. There have got to be other solutions that we haven't considered yet. So let's give ourselves enough time to fully explore those options. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak in debate on the question of re shall we reconsider Article 1? Okay, we'll move to the vote. I will restate the question. Shall the Assembly reconsider Article 1? All those in favor, 
We have invited vision, not paper ballot. Okay. Vision. Okay. We have a, we have a request for vote. Pardon me. We have a request for a vote by division of the house. And yes. Uh, yes, we may. Um, I'm going to finish restating restating the question, and then we'll move to the vote by division of the house. Shall the assembly reconsider? Article 1. Okay, so we are having now a vote by division of the House, which means in this case we can do it by a show of hands. So all those in favor, all those in favor of reconsidering the question on Article 1, please raise your hands. Okay. Okay, thank you. All those opposed, please raise your hands. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The votes in opposition, no, appear to have it. The votes in opposition have it. The motion to reconsider fails. Now, on to Article 2. The question on Article 2 is, shall the town of Woodbury adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680? What is your pleasure with respect to Article 2? I recognize this gentleman. John Reed, I wish to make an amendment. I move to amend the article so that it reads the select board. I hear you. Yep. We, we, he's stating a motion on an amendment. I move to amend the article so that it reads the select board is directed to appoint a committee of three to five town voters to consider how to best hold annual town meetings and elections. The committee's assignment includes taking public input from town residents. The committee is to report its findings and recommendations if it so chooses by September 15, 2022, so there is sufficient time for the town's voters to consider action prior to or at Town Meeting Day 2023, if they choose to do so. Okay. We have a motion to make an amendment to Article 2. You can't, you can't. Wait, please, 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 please. That motion to amend Article 2 is out of order because it's not germane to the question. The article asks whether the town shall adopt budget articles. It was duly warned voters came here to answer that question. This motion may be appropriate under Article 3 but it's not germane now. So, I'll ask again, what is your pleasure with respect to Article 2? So moved. Uh, oh, Seconded. Uh, I saw a gentleman with his hand raised. I'll recognize him first. Move the article. Okay. Monty Shatney moves Article 2. Is there a second? I um, recognize. That might be a second. Way. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on Article 2. I'll restate it quickly and then we'll go to debate. Article 2. Shall the town of Woodbury adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680C? Is there any debate? I recognize Janine. So I would be fine. You know, like I read the town report, I 
get as much information as I can, and then I go to town meeting and we kind of vote on things unless there's a lot of discussion. If there is a way to have a free discussion, I know the school board always does that, and I can choose to go or not, but if people want to have, if, if there's a way to do kind of a pre-town meeting, we're not going to do a town meeting on town meeting day, go or not, get your questions asked, then I'd be happy to go and just vote. Okay, I recognize Michael. Like, oh, uh, every year we have a pre-town meeting, even when we do have a town meeting, um, and very few people come. Um, and obviously, if we did choose to do this by a spelling battle, then we would be required to have a pre town meeting. But the town, ever since I've been on the select board, we've always had a pre town meeting before town meeting, and, and the town meeting would be here in June or in the town hall. So we've always had a pre town meeting. Yes, I recognize Eric. Yes, hi. Oh, uh, Eric Muller again. Oh, you guys are very specific that you're going to have a free town meeting, but when the first question was asked, we're very wishy-washy about it. And when you said that you'd be happy to vote on budget items, then why wouldn't you be happy to vote on uh, elections of the town in the same way? Thank you. Yep. Yep. I recognize our town clerk, Robin. Robin, you so the pre-town meeting that we have is always been on Thursday night. Is there any way we can move that to a Saturday instead of the Thursday night? speaker if they wish to answer. So we'll, we'll come through the podium and broadcast everything. Make sure everyone hears and understands. I recognize the speaker in the back and then I'll come here next. Yes, please. Thank you, Stephen and Peltz. I'm just um, suggesting that the same logic hold on this article that we discussed previously. Deciding on a budget is an important part of how our town makes decisions about our future and I would really think that that should be part of a public conversation and not voted on Australian ballot. Okay, I recognize Ginger. Ginger, um, I just want to say that numbers may not be my thing, but I always find during the discussion, either at the rare, I admit it, pre-town meeting that I go to, and the actual pre-town meetings that I've gone to for decades, even before I was retired, um, I find a lot of information and much more understanding and a lot of patience with my questions about the money, and I think it makes me a more informed voter. Thank you. Is there any other debate on Article 2? <laughs> Yes, I recognize Norm Atkin. Yeah, well, just a minor point, but I, you know, very often at the town meeting there are changes to that budget number um, because people find something out or maybe uh, something was uh, incorrectly posed in the first place and that number changes due to that. So that's a fairly common occurrence. Um, so don't do that. <laughs> Does anyone else wish to speak in debate on Article 2? Okay. Uh, yes, I recognize Diana. One more thing. Um, if we don't approve this article, we still have the opportunity to discuss things like going to a Saturday meeting uh, for, for all the town meetings so the people who work can come. And that, discussion like John suggested can happen during the year. But the, but the uh, in this case, the board didn't have an opportunity to look at the different options because a petition was submitted. 
So that at that point they have to deal with the petition and that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Any other debate on Article 2? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to the vote. So, I'll restate the question. Article 2. Shall the town of Woodbury adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA 2680C. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. 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 I request a division of the House. It was not clear to me which side prevailed. So, I will ask by a show of hands, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Article 2 fails. Now before us is Article 3. Article 3. To transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. I recognize Mr. Reed. I move that the select board be directed to appoint a committee of three to five town voters to consider how to best hold the annual town meetings and elections. Committee's assignment includes input from the town residents. Committee is to report its findings and recommendations if it so chooses by September 15th of 2022. So there is sufficient time for the town voters to consider action prior to or at town meeting day 2023 if they chose to do so. A second. Okay, so. I'll explain in a moment, but we have a motion on the statement that was just read by Mr. Reed. Seconded. Did we have a second? I thought I heard a second. Yeah. Uh, okay. Skip Marchesani seconds. Before we get to the question, I want to explain that this is non-binding. This was not warned on the articles. Uh, this was not on the town warning. So this is non-binding. It's advisory in nature. Okay? Are there any questions? Okay. So, I'll restate the question. Shall the assembly direct the select board to appoint a committee of three to five town voters to consider how best to hold annual town meetings and elections? The committee's assignment includes taking public input from town residents. The committee is to report its findings and recommendation if it chooses by September 15, 2022. So there is sufficient time for the town's voters to consider action prior to or at town meeting day 2023 if they choose to do so. Is there any debate? Yes, I recognize you. Um, I, I think it's a great idea, um, but I don't know if this should be an amendment to that motion or if I'm just asking a question. Is there a way to make sure that the people who 
board selected for that three to five people represent the two points of view that are obvious here today. Would you like to make an amendment to the motion? <laughs> you may. You may. I, 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 uh, in the interest of order, I will just I will just bring this to your attention. This is advisory in nature. Yeah. The select board meets twice monthly. There is always a public comment period at the select board meetings. Nonetheless. This motion is subject to amendment, if you'd like to make an amendment. All right, I move that the uh, select board uh, choose um, uh, uh, participants of the committee to represent equally the opinions voiced today. I don't know. <laughs> Hold one moment, please. Okay. So, we have a motion to amend the motion. Is there... It's a properly made motion to make an amendment to the non-binding motion on Article 3. Is there a second? Okay. We have a motion and a, and a second to amend the motion brought by John Reed. I will, I will restate I will restate the motion on the amendment. And without objection, I will I will state the amended part. Is that is that correct? There's a specific part. No. I will restate the amendment. The amended motion is as follows. Shall the assembly direct the select board to appoint a committee of three to five town voters who fairly represent the points of view expressed at the special meeting February 12, 2022 to consider how to best hold annual meetings and elections. The committee's assignment includes taking input from town residents. The committee is to report its findings and recommendations if it chooses by September 15, 2022, so there is sufficient time for the town's voters to consider action prior to or at town meeting day 2023 if they choose to do so. Did I state your amendment correct? Correctly? Yes. Yes? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Is there a second for the amendment? It was already seconded. Yeah. It's oh. already been seconded. I'm sorry? It's already been seconded. It was, excuse me, thank you. It was seconded. I've restated it. Thank you very much. Is there debate on the amendment? I recognize Mike McGlynn. Mr. Moderator, the only question I have in listening to that is uh, when we have our town meeting, we are going to elect two uh, individuals who are going to replace our, our current select board members. So there's only going to be one third of that select board on this upcoming year. Do we want to, um, I don't like using the word amend, but do we want to word it in there so that it involves the full new board opposed to the existing board? A, mo a motion to amend the amendment <laughs> is in order, but that's as far as we can go. Would you like to amend the amendment. 
We are now, just, just to remind myself, first of all, and all of us, where we are. So we had, we had a motion made to give direction to the select board. That's our main motion. We have an amendment to that motion that was seconded. It's out for debate now. And now it's in order to amend that amendment. Would you like to make a motion to amend the amendment? That is correct, based on the statement you just made. Okay, okay. I would like to ask, please, um, I would I like to ask, please, for a, a restatement of the, the amendment that I just stated so we can correctly amend it. Okay. Um, the, the amend so I'm, I'm asking for, for a restatement of the amendment that is now pending. Equal representation, yes. Thank you for your patience, folks. Thank you very much. A point of, of I recognize. Yeah. I don't think typically we just vote on what the amendment is, not what the article will be like with the amendment. Typically, we just ask for a vote on that amendment and not have to restate the entire article of what it would sound like with that amendment. Okay. That's typically the way it was done. Um, yeah. And it's simpler that way. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, my question here was in restating the amendment that I, that, I, that I stated. So we would have an understanding of what language needs, or what language is being proposed to be changed. So, okay. So, I'm going to read from the minutes here, and then we can focus on, on amending that language. That the select board choose participants of the committee to represent equally the options presented today. The the opinions expressed today. That's that that was that was the motion I believe that was properly made. Yes, yeah, so okay. So if you would please Mike give us the, the, the language that you'd like to propose for the for the motion that John made. Given the fact that it addresses year 2023, yes, I think it's only appropriate that the select board that deals with that is the incoming select board this coming March. Okay, I'm going to read this and see if I can see if I can insert that language. Does this get at the at the meaning of your proposal? Can I address Michael's questions? Is it is it a point of order that might facilitate this? Yeah. Okay, without objection, I'm I'm without objection I'm seeking some some guidance here on, on this. Uh, I first recognize Michael. Okay. Agenda. Therefore, it will not be on the agenda until we have a new slide. Then I will withdraw my amendment. 
it make sense? Okay, okay. Uh, rec no. Recognize this gentleman, yes. Uh, my name is Ben Williams. I, I, I also think that this was a recommendation. That's correct. It's not a binding, there's no binding anything about it. And it'll be up to the select board to then enact this as they see fit and to the circumstances that, that they face. So, That's correct. That, this is a non-binding. It was not warned. The voters, the voters um, here cannot uh, cannot adopt a binding article for which there was no proper warning. So this is not binding. It's just advisory. So I, I just want to position myself here in, in this procedure. Mike, you, you do not want to make. I withdraw. Okay. That that that. Motion is withdrawn, so we're still considering an amendment that that in essence would have, would would include on the committee equal representation from the opinions of the opinions expressed here. Okay, and now we're still debating that proposed amendment. Uh, I'm going to recognize Mr. Reed. I call the question on the amendment. Okay. I second. Okay. Okay. So we have we have a motion to call the question. It's seconded. There is there is no debate. There's no amendment. Do you have a point of order or privilege to raise? Well, I think so. <laughs> okay, please. You'll decide. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see how you can have an equal number when you have an uneven total. I, I believe it was expressed as equal representation, but they said three to five. So yeah. Well, that would include four, right? I guess you should. <laughs> So maybe we could just take the word equal out and have representation from all opinion or something? Fairly represent, or Whatever. instead of equally. But right now we have a motion to call the question. So if you wish to change the language, remember this is still an amendment. It could be amended again. Oh God. Yeah. So, so right now we're voting on calling the question on the amendment. Okay. So the question now is, Shall debate cease? And you vote immediately on the question of whether to amend the main motion. So we're just we're just voting on whether to stop debate and vote on the amendment. Does everyone understand? Yes. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of calling the question say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Okay. okay. The eyes appear to have it. The eyes have it. The motion to call the question is adopted. So the question is the question is on the amendment to the motion and the amend the the amended motion is as follows. Shall the, the select board be directed to appoint a committee of three to five town voters that equally represent the opinions expressed at the meeting on February 12th, 2022 to consider how to best hold annual meetings and elections. The committee's assignment includes taking public input from town residents. The committee is to report its findings and recommendation if it chooses by September 15, 2022. So there's sufficient time for the town's voters to consider action prior to or at town meeting day 2023 if they choose to do so. All those in favor, of that amendment as stated, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. 
The eyes appear to have it. The eyes have it. The amendment to the motion is adopted. Now, we will vote on the amended motion. And I, I will ask by unanimous consent <coughs> no. no, I will please disregard that. The motion, the question now before the assembly is shall the select board be directed to appoint a committee of three to five town voters who equally represent the opinions expressed at the meeting on February 12th 2022 to consider how to best hold annual town meetings and elections. The committee's assignment includes taking public input from town residents. The committee is to report its findings and recommendation if it chooses by September 15, 2022, so there is sufficient time for the town's voters to consider action prior to or at town meeting day 2023 if they choose to do so. Is there any debate? Hearing none, we'll move to the question as just stated. All those in favor of adopting the amended motion, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The amended motion is adopted. Okay, okay, hold on. We can give it a, we may have a rousing clap in just a moment. We're not, order. We're not, not done. Okay, now we take up article four. Wait, does that have an article the other Yeah. Isn't that just a challenge to that? That, there was, Article 3 is to transact any other town business that may legally come before the meeting. I did not yet state the question on Article 4. Is there any other business under Article 3? Uh, I will come around. Yes. Uh, I recognize Laura Murphy. I don't know what people know about the area. There's a plan after the battle. I have an information meeting here on the stand. Um, also by Zoom this coming Wednesday. Uh, we have two experts, one from the Vermont uh, Media Towns and one from the Central Vermont Media Planning Commission, come talk to us about this sort of once in a lifetime, it's a lot of money that the town is going to be getting um, into its um, And it's kind of an exciting time to think about the idea of we can do with this money. It's There's guidelines around it and not experts are going to talk to us about that. So if you're interested, I'm going to post this at the post office
recognize that. Um, taking this opportunity, since there will be a public town meeting, to thank Michael Gray for eight years of dedicated service. Under Article 3, we'll move to Article 4. Article 4, shall this meeting adjourn? Yes! yes. Motion made by Mr. McGlynn. Yes, do we have a second? Yes. Mr. Machisani, we have a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, 